Welcome back. We've arrived on another island using this uh, minecart looking thing. Which I guess we can also take back, considering the switch on it. And it looks... this looks like we're inside the caldera of a volcano. And some sort of crater lake here. A very blue looking lake. Which, as I said, is not unusual for volcanic lakes, so... I'm guessing that's what's going on here. structure up there and something weird lying down below doesn't look like we can go any further here anything to spy around here no no paint guess we need to look for totems or daggers Bunch of wood chips. Yeah, I definitely think they use this car to transport wood from the jungle island to here. Does this shred the wood? There's actually a lever here that I almost didn't see, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, what's over here? Bunch of pipes. Don't think they're related to the rotating dome network, because these seem smaller. I hear something. There's a switch. And this one goes up there towards doors in the mountain wall. And there's a walkway to the structure over there. And that continues presumably inside the mountain. And there's a switch. can turn and it changes this like it gets pushed out and that one fell in that goes towards that weird looking structure and then the third pipe goes towards the minecart I wonder if that has something to do with the lever that we saw Try that out. Yep. The that seems to have turned on this uh, paper shredder or wood shredder. I mean. bit noisy and I don't have any wood to shred so I'm just turning it back off. What do we have here? Big structure. Red light. And a door with Gen's symbol on it. Well this did look like something Gen would have built and not the villagers from what we've seen of their respective architectures. 
boiling water. You can actually see there's flames underneath there. Doesn't seem safe to go in there right now, do now does it? Um, there's a switch. And we've redirected the gas that was burning out through that chimney. And the water has stopped boiling. Red lights off. The door is still closed, though. This doesn't seem to do anything. Okay. Nothing is happening, but this pipe is connected to that switch in the middle, so maybe we need to redirect steam or power or whatever it is this way in order for that to work. see a structure like this depicted on one of the tableaus in the rotating room? I think we did. Something to do with making paper, which definitely is something you'd need wood for. Oh, now that we've Provided power, the door opens. But, uh... Not much else we can do there. What else is here, by the way? There's... A tunnel here. Can't get in there. Can't quite get under there, and there's no crouch button. The beach around the lake continues down this way. Oh, there's a ladder there. Um, that seems to lead to a hatch that's shut. Not useful. It is right next to this pipe, so... Possibly the hash opens if you turn it this way? Don't really feel like trying that right now. We haven't even done anything else with uh, the boiler yet. Now, what do we have here? I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Furnace or something? Nothing in it. Whatever it is, somebody didn't want it anymore and tossed it off the balcony here. Alright, let's head back this way and see what else we can do with the boiler.
in general, I don't like to use run very much. But sometimes it can help to speed things up. Let's see. Uh, we do see now that this white dot has come up. Which goes to this side, so... Oh, yeah. That seems to pump the water out. Can we pump it back in? Yes, we can. I think we want it empty, though. Well, we can also um, turn this switch. Oh. Probably wait for the pump to finish. And then turn the switch, which turns it towards a pipe leading towards this switch. And that raises the floor. Interesting. Let's take a look inside. We can go in here now and look out through here. This, this is where the water came in. And it drained through a hole in the ground there. Better hope nobody turns this on while we're in here, because uh, that would end badly. We can climb down through that hole with this ladder. And, oh, it actually looks like that's the tunnel we saw. It's kind of cool. Where else does this tunnel go, though? See the water drain through here, but it's long gone. Hard to tell if this tunnel actually goes down or up. Yeah, okay, we were going down. And the water gets dumped into the ocean. Sounds eerie wind through the pipe. Hey, is that... That looks like the pipe for the rotating dome. There's the weird island again. Looking at it from a different angle, we... Looking straight on towards that dagger we saw. See where this goes? Other than up the mountain, because that part seems obvious. Oh, we've made it to this balcony here. And we can open the hatch, so that didn't have anything to do with the steam, si steam valve switch, whatever. And there's a door. What the hell is over there? Don't know. There's some kind of hose coming in here. Of course, in the original, this is where the frog trap was, and now it isn't. 
so what will we find here? It looks like we can walk along here. Another very pretty looking place. Water here. Um, there's a ladder going into the water here. And some pathway that's underwater. Don't really feel like swimming though. That doesn't do anything. Looks like that might be a pump. Oh, wait. We're gonna need power, right? This is gonna need the steam power. Yeah, there's a, the pipe is attached to it. Okay, back we go. Yeah, this pipe goes out here. Following the stairs. And then it comes out through here and indeed goes down there so yes we will need it to be switched this way fortunately we have a bit of a shortcut and I'm gonna run here We don't have to go all the way around through the pipe and the boiler when we can just use that ladder. Switch that back to the way it was set, towards up there. Wait, how is that walkway accessible? Didn't really see a way to get there. We'll worry about that later. Back up the ladder we go. in here. All right, hopefully we have power for the uh, such a pretty looking cave. Again, especially in VR. For this, let's see. It is a pump. A very fast one. This would take so long in real life. No more water. I'm guessing this refills through water coming in through the ceiling. This music feels like it's stolen from abduction. Um, Interesting looking ceiling. I'm guessing this water refills over time and that's why the pump is here. A cart with a bed on it. Makes sense. Where does it go? Over here.
Looks like an elevator, maybe? Let's take a closer look at that cart. And actually, there's something over here, too. A little hammock. And some kind of tool. In VR, you get to do that yourself. We apparently mined out... a ball. And from the looks of things, it's not the first time that happened. In fact, quite a lot of these balls have been mined here. These stones. I can pick the stone up. And that looks like it's meant for it. This must be an important stone if it deserves its own bed. Look at that. Hundreds of these have been mined here. And... Oh, this moves the cart. Okay. That does nothing. Well, let's just move the cart to the other side. Let's see what that accomplishes. Okay. That is as far as it will go, apparently. Stone is still safely in there. Look at this. Wait, that's not even the mining thing. That's just been deposited here. What are these then? But in here you can definitely see just how many of these have been mined. Must have extended further and further back. As they needed more of them. Uh, what does this do? Oh, I guess it lowers that elevator. The counterweight is rising. And there it comes. Alright, the cart automatically moved forward here. Wait, that's not what we want. How about... Ah, now that works. Other way, okay. We can raise ourselves up. Okay. Oh, I think we're inside that structure. Oh, we saw. On up on top. Where's that sound coming from? Stopped. Oh, no. Something's in here. Wait, this looks like those mouse traps we saw. Near the first totem we found. Oh! It's a cute little frog man. Goodbye, frog. You're free now. Oh, you actually could hear him drop into the water. That's cute. All right. I guess these are frog traps. I don't know what they're doing with the frogs, but it doesn't look pleasant. I think we've spared 
this one frog of uh, a uh, bad end. What is this place, though? Just want to check. I guess this was locked. Yeah, it does take us out here. Hmm, probably wouldn't have been able to get in then this way. Want to look around inside though. There's a book here. And a pen. And some darts. Perhaps similar to the one that the guy in the beginning was shot with. I don't know what that is. Some lights. That maybe used to shoot those darts? Not sure. Let's check out this though. It's another journal. These are numbers we've seen before. Three and four. So thirty-four. Six and um, that one's seven. Thirty-four seems like an awfully long time ago. Um, we'll look around a little bit before we read that. What's this doing? Seems to have stopped. It was moving. It is polishing this stone. Oh, that's the brakes. That sets it spinning. There's an achievement for looking at this for 15 minutes in a single playthrough. I don't have that one yet. I wonder if the doing nothing for 15 minutes thing is a reference to Uru Path of the Shell and it's some of its more devious puzzles. Uh, what else do we have here? A couple more balls here. That seem to be similar to the one there. These are done, I guess. These are like the pneumatic tube thingies from the Starry Expanse. Some writing here. The counterintuitive aspect of fire marbles that a greater strike force does not always yield the maximum energy outport. Output never ceases to amaze me. Optimal strike force base value, and it looks like he was gonna write a number and then he crossed it out. Um, fire marble, arrow power marble, strike force compensation. And we see these symbols that we've seen in the big golden dome and on some of the rotating domes. Like this one is the one for Temple Island. And then this one is the one for the island with the big tree. And then some more numbers. And minus and plus signs. This one's minus seven. Minus three, plus five, plus, I don't know these two. Let me take a look at the numbers again. 
We couldn't learn any more than these first ten from uh, the game. And actually, the game didn't want to teach me more than the first nine, but it does teach you ten if you're patient enough. But it seems that there's more symbols beyond it. I actually come to think of it, like, we don't have a symbol for 10 in our Arabic numeral system, because we just write the symbols 1 and 0. But in the journal, we just did see a number that was more than one symbol. So that's kind of weird. Also, if we look at these, we can see that, yes, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are unique. But then 6, 7, 8, and 9 are just 1, 2, 3, and 4 overlaid on top of 5. And 10 looks an awful lot like the number 2, but rotated. Actually, so is five. Five is five is the number one, but rotated ninety degrees. And then two is the number of ten is the number two rotated. Uh, rotated um, ninety degrees. So, what if it keeps working that way? If we look at the the numbers we have here, we have what looks like the number two overlaid on top of the number 10. That could be 12, then. This one is the number 1 overlaid on top of something that we don't know, but it, that looks like the number 3 rotated 90 degrees. So if 1 rotated 90 degrees is 5, 2 rotated 90 degrees is 10, then 3 rotated 90 degrees would be 15. Overlaying 1 gets us 16. That way you can make the numbers 16, 17, 18, and 19. And then 20, I suppose, would be 4 rotated 9 degrees, which we did actually see, I believe, in the sheet on the uh, no, we didn't see it on this one. I think it was on the the piece of paper with the writing. There was a 4 rotated 90 degrees. Didn't take a picture of that one. But that, I suppose, would be 20. And then we can make 21, 22, 23, and 24 by overlaying the numbers on that. So that gives us these 24 symbols all together. That's pretty interesting. Pretty cool way of doing numbers. We can't, however, make a number 25 because to do that would make would mean rotating 5 90 degrees and if we do that we just get 1. We could potentially do it with 2, 3, 4 by putting them in a different side of the box, but it doesn't work for one, so I don't think, or for five, so I don't think that's uh, what we're meant to be doing there. Neither can we rotate six. So maybe this is a base 25 system where each position. Um, is a value of 25, a multiple of 25. In our normal base 10 system, you the first number is just 0 through 9. Then the second number from the right, you multiply it by 10. The third number from the right, you multiply it by 100, or 10 to the second power. Then 1,000, 10 to the third power. In a base 25 system, you would do the same thing, but with 25. So the first digit is one of these symbols. Um, well. Presumably there has to be a symbol for zero, but we haven't seen it yet. Um, and then the second digit from the right would be that number, the digit, 
multiplied by 25. And the next digit next to that would be multiplied by 25 to the second power, then 25 to the third power, and so forth. Very, very interesting. Okay, that gave us a lot better understanding of the numbers. Um, there's some equipment here. Not entirely sure what we're meant to be doing with that. Okay. Hmm. Not very clear either. Ooh, more evidence of paper making. Because there's actually paper here. Actually, this looks like he's binding it into a, a book. Some kind of clamp, probably used as part of this process. But is he just making books for, like, his journals and stuff? Atra said in the journal he gave us that the art of Dunny bookmaking was kept only in the ancient libraries in Dunny, and so how would Gen know how to do it? Are these like tusks around the lights? Looks like it. This man has a weird taste in the core. Um. Some rings with uh, dunny letters on them. I'm not sure what those are for. More paper and bound books. Hmm, I wonder if that's supposed to be like a night sky globe or if this is something to do with the starry expanse and the star fisher. It's possible. Hey! We know what this is. This must be the one for the missing one from in the in the jungle. Okay. Oh, and a dagger next to it as well. This sheet of paper. More numbers. So this is three and twelve, if we're correct. So if I'm right about the base. Um, about the base um, 25 thing, then this would be 3 times 25, 75, plus 12. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, so that's 87. So eight, 87, 7, and that's 1 and 3. So that's 25 plus 3 would be 28. 87, 7, 28. That looks a lot like those dates in the... No, actually I meant... I mean to open... Um, never mind the fact that my satchel was halfway inside the... Uh, the table there. But that looks like these dates. And 87 does seem to be the correct year, because that's when Atrus is writing about meeting us. And that's only 12 days after the last entry in Atrus's journal. That does give me a pretty uh, strong confidence that we uh, are translating this date correctly. Um, why am I looking at it like that? Okay, it wants to be at the top of the screen right now. But yeah, 87, 7, 28. Let's see what he writes. Last week, one of my acolytes caught a rebel sniffing around the cemetery totem in the jungle. In keeping with the general ineptitude of my men, the dog was allowed to escape, but at least a full 
had the presence of mind to bring me the object in question. It is a primitive eyepiece into which one of the native numbers has been set. Given the fact that their cursed numeric system requires you to know which way a symbol has been rotated in order to read it, however, there is no way to make sense of it. It is probably an overestimation of the moiety's intelligence to suspect that there may be some greater meaning behind it, but tomorrow I shall send a surveyor out to inspect the other totems just to be safe. Hmm. So it seems like these things, with the symbols in them, were left behind by rebels, who are apparently called the moiety, and they were put on those totems. Which are apparently cemetery totems. Okay. We don't know why they were doing that, and apparently Gen had difficulty reading that because he needs to know what way this is oriented. That note also confirms for us that these are native numbers, Rivenese numbers. Leave it up to Cyan to have us learn yet another number system. And actually, I had already guessed that these were numbers before I got here. After seeing some of the totems and the fact that there are gaps in our knowledge from the worksheet from the classroom, I figured, like, oh, these are probably also numbers, and therefore probably Rivenese, since the other ones are, du are Dunny. But this confirms it. And Gen can't tell what number this is because he'd have to know how it is oriented. But we can tell how it's supposed to be oriented because we know that this streak of paint has to be at the top. It has to be at the top at every totem we saw, including the uh, one that was missing this part. So now we can take a picture of this one. And annotate that. Missing symbol from jungle totem. Oh, and actually, can we figure out what number that is then? It would have been this orientation, so that's actually number three. Gen also told us that um, the uh, numbers have to do with rotation. And we're missing a few here. We have one, that's the single wedge in the top right. We don't have two, but we have three, which is a wedge in the top left, which then logically means that uh, two should be the wedge at the bottom. Then four is missing here. We do have five, which is the two wedges on the bottom left. We have six, which is the two wedges at the top. So for number four, the two wedges should be on the on the right somewhere. I don't know if they're going to be at the top right or the bottom right. We'd have to see it somewhere. Um, seven is missing. We do have eight, which just adds a wedge on the bottom. So I guess seven, since, you know, they rotate like this, seven would be two on the top right like this. And 9 would be 2 on the top left. And then when we get to 10, we get a doubled version of this symbol. And actually, that's on the bottom right. So, presumably so is 4. So that then gives us all the native Rivenese numbers that we know so far, 1 through 10, which look like this. So now we know two number systems.
experience. Learning that one wasn't enough. Um, well... Let's take a look at this. But I guess we should probably do that in the next video.